everyone, welcome back to Earl Grey Books. I'm Ellie and today I'm doing my February book haul. Um, I filmed this a couple of times now and every time it has gone wrong somehow. Um, so let's just hope that this time it works out. Without further ado, we're just going to get into it. Um, I got a few books in Feb. I didn't go too crazy, but I did buy more than what I'd hoped I would. So trying to cut down in March, we'll see how that goes. Um, so we'll start with the two that I've actually read. Um, so first one I have here is Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. I love Alice Oseman. Her writing is incredible. Um, I haven't read her third book, which is I Was Born For This, but I love Solitaire and I love Radio Silence and I absolutely adored this as well. Um, but I will talk more about my thoughts about it in my February wrap up. Um, it is a graphic novel about two characters from Solitaire and yeah, like I said, I'll talk more about it in my wrap up. And then, uh, just the other day, I finished The Arsonist uh, by Chloe Hoop. This is a book about Black Saturday, which were, which was, which was a sort of, I guess, collection is a word of fires um, on a particular set day in Melbourne. Well, in Victoria, here and um, back in 2009 a lot of people lost their lives, their homes, all of their belongings, entire towns were destroyed. Um, my grandparents lost people who they knew, the fires got really close to my house, um, where my dad's house, not the house I live in now. Um, so I was 13 at the time and I remember writing about it at school and I remember seeing the sky one day in woodshop class and um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> it's kind of a day that a lot of Victorians remember. I guess it's kind of like a, you know, like people remember where they are when they heard about Princess Di sort of thing. Um, a lot of Victorians have very intense memories about the day. Um, this was about two fires that were deliberately lit on that day and um, it sort of explores the police investigation and also the court case. I will leave Jacqueline from six minutes for six minutes for me. I'll leave her review below because she is much more eloquent talking about it and I will also leave um, the written review that I did for this one if you're interested. So those are the only ones I've read so far. Um, the Arsonist is part of the Stella Price long list and I, a lot of my February reading went into that long list so I didn't really get to the books that I had bought but I am hoping to get to them in March. I have a lot of a lot of things that I need to read in March so we'll see how it goes but until then we're just gonna go through the rest of these randomly because there isn't really like an theme or an order to them so let's start with this one because this is the only one that I didn't buy. I got this as an ARC from work. This is The Great Unknowable End by Catherine Ormsby. I don't really know what this is about. I get kind of like um, a million Junes vibes from it. So maybe something a little bit magical realism. Um, I wanted to read this because one of the main characters has trots and uh, 
you may know that I really like reading books with disability in, so here we are. This is one that I'm excited for. It's already out, but uh, I'm super excited to have it. Um, I mean, we might as well go with new releases. I guess there is kind of a theme here. Actually, I have quite a lot of new releases that I did not realize. Okay, first one. Let's start with the big one because, you know, this is just, this is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I love The Bone Season. It's one of my all time favorite series. So super excited about this one, but also, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm hoping to start this one over the next few days, but I am reading quite a few fantasy books at the moment, so I'm not sure whether I'm gonna still want to be reading fantasy. I've kind of been in like a non-fiction mood because of the solar prize, even though a lot of them are fiction. Um, but yeah, we will see. I feel like even if I start this in March, it's gonna be a one that takes me through to at least April. These next two, um, are actually all of the new releases that I got this month are, are my most, an some of my most anticipated books for the year. So next one I have is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. Um, I loved The Hate You Give. It was one of the best books that I read last year. Also one of the best movies that I saw because I saw it twice within the period of about, I think it was about 48 hours um, with the same person. So thanks Katie, I love you. Um, but yeah, I'm just super excited about this one. I haven't had the chance to get to it yet. I just, I don't know, I wasn't really in the mood for it in March. I've kind of been stepping away from contemporary YA, but I know that this is going to be a good one, so hopefully I'll pick it up sometime in March. I am hoping to body read this with Angel, which should be fun because we both really love her due to us. <laughs> and then of course I bought King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. Um, this one came in a little bit late to work. There was, I don't know, there was some complication with the order, so we had books for customers, but I was like, you know what, even though I've pre-ordered it, I will just wait until the rest of the copies come in. So they came in um, a few days later, after the release, and yeah, I picked it up. I started reading it that night, and I got 60 pages in, but I just wasn't really in the mood for it. I want to start it again uh, once I feel a little bit more in the Grisha zone um, because I'm, I, I know I'm going to enjoy it and I want to savour it. Okay, so we've got two more 2019 releases. I think maybe one of these came out in January. Yes, so this one is Imperfect by Lee Kaufman, which is how our bodies shape the people we become. This is a non-fiction kind of part memoir, part sociology, I guess, about yeah, how our bodies uh, shape the people we become. I'm going to an event with Lee Kaufman and uh, one of my favourite people ever, Carly Finlay, in um, a few weeks actually, <laughs> at the end of this month. Uh, so I, I picked this one up because I really wanted to read it and um, yeah, just know what I was getting into with the talk. I know a lot about Carly already but I didn't know anything about Lee. So, super excited. Um, and I believe this one came out in January. 
um, going from, I got this from work, and we always, there's always the date that it came into the store on there. I'm not going to show you the sticker because it has the name of the store I work in, but this one says the 11th of the 1st, so I'm, I think it came out in Feb, in January. <laughs> Um, okay, and my last release for February 2019, I think, 2019 in general, is uh, Love Looks Pretty On You by Lang Leaf. I wasn't a fan of Lang Leaf, and then suddenly I was. <laughs> um, I've read three of her poetry collections now. And I've enjoyed all of them progressively more. So I'm hoping that I'm going to love this one. Like, that's going to hopefully follow the upward trend. And yeah, I'm just super excited about this one. And I just love a little bit of poetry. And plus, I love this cover. I just love the colour. And it's so pretty. Highly, highly... Uh, appreciate this. <laughs> Whoever was the graphic designer for this, you did a good job. I approve. Um, and then I've got four just like random books. Like I said, there, there isn't really a theme to any of these. Um, let's go with this one because this is the most like far out ones from any of the others. This is Starry Night, Van Gogh at the Asylum by Martin Bailey. This is like part coffee table book, part biography, part art book about Vincent Van Gogh's time in the asylum that he was in. It also talks about like the paintings that uh, he did during that time, for example. There's some there. And um, it also like talks about the asylum itself and what was going on in his life and so on. Um, Van Gogh is one of, is actually he's he's my favorite painter. Starry Night is my favorite piece of art, um, and I just wanted to know more about him. So here we are. Speaking of things I wanted to know more about. <laughs> When I was probably about, oh my, my foot's gone to sleep, um, 11 or 12, oh god, my foot really has gone to sleep. <sighs> I cannot bend it. Um, I was a little bit obsessed with everything French, and one of those things was Joan of Arc. Um, so this is Joan of Arc <laughs> by Helen Castor. I picked this one up at a book cruiser. I don't know if they're anywhere but Melbourne, but it's like a little like temporary bookshop that sells everything for like a certain price. These were all seven dollars on the day that we were there. I've seen them for ten dollars and I've also seen them for five. So I don't know like how they decide what it is, but it, these were seven dollars. Um, and yeah, I just... I don't know, I've just been like super in the non-fiction mood lately. Let's have a look what this looks like. Um, yeah, boring. Um, and yeah, I just thought that, you know what, I could do with a little bit of historical non-fiction. And here we are. Um, okay, let's go this one next. Um, this is The Poet X by Elizabeth Expedo. I wanted to read this as part of Blackathon. It was the group book. Um, unfortunately, it was unavailable with the publishers uh, right up until like the last day of February. Um, so I managed to pick it up on that last day, but I didn't get time to read it. It is a... Uh, novel told in verse. Um, everyone I've heard talk about this has said amazing things so I'm really excited for it. I think this one will be kind of a quick read because of the fact that it's in verse, um, though I'm sure it's going to 
ruin my life. Um, so hopefully I can sort of pick this up in the next few days to kind of break up all the heavy fantasy books that I have been reading and that I will be continuing to read in March. And then finally, <laughs> this book took a long time to get to me. Uh, well, okay, so I ordered this back in September from work because it was coming out in October while I was going to be in the US and I didn't like the US cover because it was the same as the awful Australian paperback cover only in hardback and I was like no I'm not having that so I ordered this one and it got there and everything and like my co-workers held on to it and then I didn't buy it until February <laughs> despite having been home since November um, and that is Wondersmith the Calling of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is the sequel to Nevermore, which is one of my favorite books of all time. So yeah, um, this is just like gorgeous. I don't usually buy books in hardcover because I don't really like reading from them. But like I said, I don't like the paperback cover and I wanted this to match my ARC copy of Nevermore, which is basically this, but but blue and gold. Um, and it's just, but it's, it's so pretty and I'm really glad that I ended up going with the hardcover. It's got this beautiful W there. It's got these absolutely stunningly like illustrated end papers. Um, again, I haven't got to this one yet. I'm hoping to reread Nevermore this month and finally get around to reading this one. I'm so excited because everyone that's been talking about it has said that it is as good as the first book and I just really need that right now. So there we are. Those are my uh, Feb books. Um, because I kind of had some trouble with like technical difficulties and also I didn't mention that I've been in hospital again. Um, I'm going to be posting my February wrap up tomorrow so that I can just kind of make sure that I keep up with the videos that I do want to make for the rest of the month. I'm hoping that March will be the month that uh, I don't get sick quite as often as I did in February and that I can actually do the, the things that I want to do here on YouTube and on my blog and by the way and, and other things that I'm going to talk about in another video because this is already really long. Um, but anyway, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow with that wrap up. Thanks for watching. Bye.